use this. The cases are much rarer than regular reports of hauntings. The activity can be more physical, and the spark to ignite usually revolves around adolescent children. We are, of course, speaking about cases of poltergeist activity. Within the last year, we have researched two such cases, travelling over the border into the heart of England. These rare cases were actually within 19 miles of each other, and a mere 35 minute drive. We are speaking about the Haunted Object Museum in Rotherham, and 30 East Drive in Pontefract. We take a look at the highlights from these poltergeist houses, as the team put themselves on the line to gather evidence of otherworldly activity, and I would say we got some stunning results. We travel deep into England to have a direct observation and research session at the infamous 30 East Drive, Pontefract, which sits in a historic market town in West Yorkshire. The location has gained a renewed interest in the last six years due to the well-received film When the Lights Went Out, which is based on the original activity experienced by the Pritchard family. The Pritchards moved into number 30 East Drive in August 1966. History then shows us that the activity started soon afterwards with many weird situations arising here. Fine chocolate substance was witnessed falling not from the ceiling, but from a level below head height. With this, the start of the infamous case had begun. Why, we do not know. But like many classic cases of poltergeist activity, it would centre around the children who were at the prime teenager stage of life, a common factor in such activity. Pools of water would mysteriously appear with efforts to mop up the water thwarted by more pools appearing on the floor. Green foam appearing from taps and toilet even after water was turned off. Lights being turned off and on, Plants were thrown out of their pots landing on the stairs. Cupboards would be shaken violently. Photographs seemingly slashed with a sharp knife. And an endless levitation of objects including a solid oak sideboard. The energy was dubbed Mr Nobody by the local press in 1968. The family, however, preferred to refer to it as Fred in an attempt to perhaps normalise the situation. Exorcisms were attempted here but failed miserably, often met by further actions such as walls seeping with holy water, faces slapped, people shoved down the stairs, and the energy would manifest hands from nowhere as if conducting the Christian songs. Whoever this energy was, it was not for moving, but neither was the family, who actually continued to live here for many years to come. Many amazing teams, researchers and even TV shows have accessed the property and conducted their own sessions and techniques here. One thing in common is the insistence that the location does still hold unseen energies with the majority gaining validation of paranormal activity. What would be discovered when we used some legendary ITC devices here? We had an original Frank's box and a cultist box created by one of Frank's friends before he passed over to spirit, Mark Cultus. Basically, just a swept radio. The, the, the system sweeps across the radio band, and that gives the spirits and entities uh, something to, like bits of speech and music and stuff. They make voices out of it. And it allows them, you can hear them talking. It'll, it's, you can hear it. It's, you can tell it's not just radio fragments, but they'll, they'll address you by name. Sometimes they'll swear at you. <laughs> Can you tell me either your real name or the name that you're known by, please? Aye. 
We arrived in Rotherham and, checking in quick, a quick meal, and arrangement of the equipment, we head up to the Portergeist House and Museum and meet owners Lee and Lindsay Steer of Ghosts of Britain. Lee and Lindsay, much like us, had plans for the evening for investigation, but kindly waited for our arrival to give us a tour and information, making us very much welcome. After this, it was time to see what energies awaited us and would they communicate with us through our tried and tested techniques. The house is said to be haunted by a poltergeist which the witness, the previous landlady, reported that things would get thrown around the room, objects would move and radios would turn on. It was once a house to local miners, where there is a death documented as a male occupant who burned to death. It later then became a commercial shop for bridal and fancy dress, where owner Jane would report the spooky going-ons, which was also documented in the local newspaper and specifically the Rotherham Record. This is off the cuff. Filming. Even Lee's a bit like. Oh. This is off the cuff filming. The is last you... time. Yeah. We mm. are in Poltergeist House, we've just come in to check everything before the guests come tonight. But as but... the video says, oh my god, you are not going to believe it. I can't. Because <laughs> I've just been in that demon room and I said, Silly, there's something not right in here. It feels. It just don't feel. It feels like there's something missing or there's something wrong in there. So guys, I've walked in today and noticed them run, and, and my first instinct was, ooh, that's interesting, because I never touched them. They they have turned themselves on, guys, so my, my first thing what I did was, ooh, we've got CCTV there. Hmm, let's go and have a look. Like, watch here. Watch there, okay? Yeah, right. So it's turned off there, guys. I'm going to pause it. Just keep watching that little So it, it is off. That confirms it's off. Watch there. It is, there is zero light. So now I'm going to press play. So just watch for it lighting up in a second. There. So there you go. Do you see that, guys? The ball's flashing beside you, right? The ball was flashing oh, beside you. Oh, the You see that? Did you get that? One tray bag. Yeah, I did. No, it's As always, guys, we're going to record the sessions and we're going to analyse them fully. So you'll be able to find out what's going on. And we're going to use everything too. So we're going to use we're going to use our apps. We're going to use radio scanning frequencies. We're going to do just just raw EVPs as well. So we've got the best of three. Is this just falling over? We've got the light on, so you can obviously still see what we're doing. We're going to run the Frank's box. It's quite difficult in a way, but it's really good when we go back and analyse it. Then we'll move on to the, the SP app, and then we'll see how we go. There's so many meters going off in this room. It's you can hear the meter going off here. We've got a temperature increase, which could be natural. We've got, We've got a slight reading over at the rook. It's already <coughs> fallen over.
There is a lot of dust areas that have gone off. I am not saying no Okay, you setting this ball off here. Yeah, the room is fairly dusty. PSP 11 going off. And again, I'm going to ask you, are you setting the ball off here? Could you do that again for us, please? Yeah. Ball's going off behind us, guys. You got that, Kyle? No, come in K two's going crazy as well. Okay, guys, I need to I need to go into the coal shed into here on my own because I was voted to do so in the Scottish Paranormal Group in the, the poll. Everybody voted for me to come in here, so I'm inside the coal shed. Um, I'm going to just move this paint pot. And I'm going to sit on that. I don't want to put it too dark, you won't be able to. Uh... Okay, it's not very big in here. Um, if you're here with me, maybe you can talk into the microphone so people can hear you. Spirit, I'm going to knock. Could you do the same? And again, I'm going to knock. Could you do that, please? Could you do that, please? Could you do that, please? I feel, the only thing I feel is like out of breath, which is weird because I'm sitting down. So I feel quite breathless. Um, Which is weird. We'll piece it together. Jan, are you feeling spirits here with me? Okay. We'll piece it together. Jan, are you feeling spirits here with me? Okay. <clears throat> I'm feeling very breathless, guys. <clears throat> I'll try to flick the camera. There we go. That's a bit better. So yeah, there's not, there's not much to see in here, I'm afraid, but. Always going again behind me, Kyle. What was that? Jen. Jen again. Different device. 
Are you connected to any item within this building? No. Who's the man who burnt to death here? Do I Someone might have come through the meter there as well. Do I Crazy man, that's how really Crazy like. man. Sorry, I need to stand up. Oh! Again. Again, again. again it's falling over. I mean, it, We're not it moving. Floor? Is it the floor? <laughs> well, the, bit, the only way you can do that is you test it. <coughs> yeah, remember that, sir. We're moving at the time. Could be, but we're only doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you have to. We can't, we can't see whether it is or not, guys. What's happened? You hear something at this? Just listen. Where we go? Me? Me? Can you set off the REM pod for us? Yes. Yes. Can you do this? Three. I still think you could do something physical in here as well. Yeah, I'm feeling quite breathless. Nothing overly bad. <clears throat> yeah, very heaviness, Shannon. Yeah, yes. I, I don't feel sad. Just feel a little bit breathless. Again, Spirit, I'm going to knock on the wall. Could you do those three knocks back to me? So there's, there's a bit of a heavy feeling. I'm not claustrophobic or anything, so I should be okay. Okay, there's, there's certain little noises, but I don't know if that's those pipes. I feel like we were being abused and maybe being put in there. Or she was hiding, yeah. Okay, I feel like being in a cave. Could be picking up with something residual. <clears throat> the heavy breathing feeling. Like like I've just um, walked up a hill or run away from someone. Um, this is the famous bridal doll here in the corner, so you'll have seen this before. This doll's been on TV. The last time this lady graced our presence, all kind of strange things began to happen. Chairs moved on their own. <laughs> this music began to play. Who knows what could happen today because the creepy doll is back. We've been doing a Vulcan mind mould, whatever, with the doll here. What are you reading? What are you discovering? What is in that doll? The first thing that I had with this doll is a little girl. The, the next thing I felt was quite a maternal presence, so mum um, of the little girl. The little girl passed first. I feel as though that little girl actually had her life taken from her, to be honest with you. And the, the, the nasty part of the doll is kind of a male energy that seems to come and go. And I feel that that's the person that was responsible for, for taking the life of the little girl. paranormal TV shows. Um, it came in a collection with these three dolls down here as well, I think, is that right? Yeah. And this is the only one that's alleged to be haunted. It's alleged to, to not like husbands, uh, tends to attack males. 
Okay. Married men. Um, we've also got a, <coughs> an actual bridal dress up here as well. It was, was donated to the guys. This was worn by the women. What, what was it Lee said? Yeah, our, our fiance went away to war um, and never came back. So she, she wore the dress pretty much for the rest of her life. So there's, there's absolutely, it's what Lee said and it's true, you know, it's, this is the sort of item that would probably have some form of yeah. attachment because it meant so much to that person. It's not necessarily specifically haunted, but you know, it's something that would attract the, the spirit of the lady who's still here. This is, this, is a fun, this is a funny room, we've all kind of found it in here. Um, I don't know what, I don't know if it's, if it's the, the bridal doll or if it's something that's here, I don't know. This was also a room where there was a child believed to have died. Okay. Um, he was believed to have been scalded to mm -hmm. death. Um, they, they traced it back through the, the court records and things like that. So there could be energy of ch child in here as well. Yeah. It could be it could be all over the house, so it doesn't have to be in one yeah. place. Yeah. Any spirit connected to either one of the items within the building or the building itself? There you go. You. Connection. Do you have a male spirit? Once for yes, twice for no. Yes. Did you die in this building? Once for yes, twice for no. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Did you die in a fire? Once for yes, twice for no. Yes. Was the wind to the neck? Died in a fire. But did you, did you have a witness in there? Yeah. Yeah. Did you commit suicide? Did something in this house possess you to do that? I've just heard a thud outside. That's a really strong yes. Was it? that a dark energy that made you do this? No. Is your name John? John. What's that? So, <clears throat> by the fire, yeah. something in the house caused him to do it, yeah. but it wasn't a dark energy. No. Could it be connected to an item or something? Though? Isn't it? Yeah. It was it a wound or was it a, was he strangled? Or was it more of a wound or did he strangle himself? Because no. it's over this area. He might have strangled himself, but it's over yeah. this area. Okay. Got a connection. Do you have a male spirit with us once for yes, twice for no? Yes. Are you the same spirit we were speaking to just a minute ago? Once for yes, twice for no. Thank you. Is your name James? Once for yes, twice for no. No, James. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know whether that's the know anyway. Is your name John? That's a good validation thing, yeah, though. That's a good validation. Yeah. If it says yes now. Yeah, yes, yes, no, John. Okay, yeah. Thank you. That's good. That's good validation. John, was it your emotions that drove you to take your own life? Strong yes. Was it the emotions of this house? My legs yeah, are yeah, freezing. Right. Yeah, right yeah. <clears throat> that, that was a good little yes no session there guys. I quite enjoyed that. That was um yeah, that was good info. Yeah. It's absolutely sensible. Out again. No, we're not going to leave. No, we're not going to leave. I heard it again. We're not leaving. <laughs>
Let me brush you. We're staying right here <laughs> until you show yourself to us. Could you use this? Did you say one? He opened the door upstairs. Did that make sense to you? We keep hearing about this um this monk named Fred. We're not going to leave. Are you here? Can you tell us what happened in this room, please? Mm -hmm. Or... Spy. Yes, or... <laughs> just for the benefit of the tape, this is the crime boy room, is that correct? No. Okay. okay. <laughs> the name significant to this property, please. Three. Did anyone die in this room? Okay, this is your final chance before we're going to have a little break. We may not have gained as much physical activity as we would like from poltergeist cases. However, the level and quality of audio communication obtained from both locations are astounding at times. The feel of the locations, the small subtle occurrences and being able to navigate the rooms and sense 
that change in energies was something else. Perhaps the primary poltergeist energies have moved with the spark of adolescent vibrations removed, leaving behind a very noticeable haunting without the telltale exceptional experiences had by those in the past. Perhaps on a revisit though, the energies of this area in England will make us rethink this stance. We shall see. <laughs>